Um, so first things first, great shot with the field put together from the elites here, and you talked about a little bit about that earlier this month. How excited are you to actually see these guys uh, get rolling here at the Great Field? Yeah, more excited by the day. Uh, I actually, as you know, had a hard time keeping this one secret because I knew how good it would be. And then as it's taken shape, it got better. You know, Tom Walsh, after he was confirmed, he went and set a Commonwealth Games record, won the gold. So he's far and thrown farther than any athlete in Commonwealth Games history, which is a, as long and rich a history as the Drake Relays. Uh, and then in second is Chuck Inequichi. Uh, Nigerian who so now we have gold and silver from the Commonwealth Games and and Chuck although an NCAA champion and a wonderful athlete we we kind of thought he was uh, a seventh eighth ninth in this field but all of a sudden it's the two hottest throwers in the world plus Ryan Krauser who's the Olympic record holder who we've seen dunk a basketball and do all that and we were talking about Ryan Krauser for three months straight so it's the world champion, the Olympic champion, uh, the Diamond League champion, Darrell Hill, uh, not to forget the, our stadium record holder, Ryan Whiting, so it just gets better and better by the day. Uh, when it comes to you putting a field like this together, what's the process for that? How, and when you tell some of these other competitors who else is coming, does that naturally draw some in? Well, in some instances, <laughs> it does, because athletes want to come and they want that competition, particularly here, particularly here in Drake Stadium. We have a rich tradition of having world-class shot putters in the southwest corner, right by the finish line, right by our passionate track fans. These guys know that on a sunny day in April, there's no better place in the world to throw a shot put. So that's a draw. Then you get one or two names and there's suddenly an interest. But I'm also very careful with where those names get distributed because sometimes there are athletes that don't want that competition and dodge their components. But Tom Walsh, Chuck Inequichi, Ryan Whiting, that's not these guys. These guys saw the world's best thrower coming to Des Moines and, and said, how do you sign? How do I sign up? How do I get to Des Moines? So it's been a lot of fun working with their agents. What else is in the works right now? A uh, Paralympic field uh, is grow or event listing is growing as well. For yeah, that's exactly right. Today, just moments ago, we announced uh, an unprecedented partnership with U.S. Paralympics. Uh, you know, since Hy-Vee came on and supported us, we haven't had this many events with U.S. Paralympics. We've got four events, two for the men. The first time ever we've done the Ambulatory 100, uh, a crowd favorite, the Ambulatory 200 returning. And then on the women's side, the first time we've ever done the Wheelchair 400. And then, uh, again, another crowd favorite with these elite level Paralympians is the, the Women's Wheelchair 100. Awesome. And David Brown is a name that comes to mind as far as one of those Paralympic athletes. Um, is he going to be back this year? Yeah, David Brown, his, his uh, guy, Jerome Avery, these two guys have uh, epitomized what teamwork means, not just here at the Drake Relays, but at the Paralympic Games internationally, winning a gold and a silver together. Uh, and, it, and it truly demonstrates how athletes can excel to their ability with, uh, with uh, no, uh, uh, no consideration for, for anything but their competition. With the growth of the Paralympic Games, how important has it been for you to really continue that growth here at the Relays as well? Yeah, absolutely. The Paralympic Games, they embody what, you know, many of what, uh, much of what is right with the sport. Uh, these athletes demonstrate uh, the, the, the same uh, attributes that our Iowa high school athletes aspire to attain. World-class competitors that focus on what's possible. You mentioned the high school athletes as well. It's been a tough start to their year as well. How, how does that qualifying happen for those athletes with maybe a little bit short schedule here? Yeah, it's tough. You know, I think it's it's uh, a uniquely challenging season for the Iowa high school kids, their coaches, even for the officials, and for meet organizers. Meet organizers. We have a, a high school meet, the Jim Un Jim Duncan Invitational. We spent all afternoon working to rearrange that schedule to be sure we give the opportunity the the athletes the best opportunity to compete and qualify uh, despite the challenging weather. Uh, the, the, the good news here is all these kids are Iowans. They're born here. They know what it is to compete no matter the conditions. You know, last year we saw incredibly challenging conditions at the Drake Relays and what the kids do, they came and they set records and they won titles. And, the, and these kids will do the same this year. No matter the circumstances, they just need an opportunity with a, a little bit of sunshine and a little bit of dry weather. And I think we'll get that here in the next week. What are, what are the next two, two and a half weeks like for you? Uh, <laughs> not a lot of sleep, 
a lot of emails uh, and a lot of caffeine. That, that's kind of the, the, the main three things that I'll be focused on.